Broadcasting live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Beer Googles. Double E. Double O. Double G. With Chris Woodsy Peralta and Mark Poles. From the home office in Gilbert, Arizona. Hello. Hi. Hi. I need you? to crank up the microphone and break it off. The crank knob, up sir. the knob. This guy. Yes, tell poof me it. Ooh, stop. Ooh, tell ooh. me stop. Stop. Way too much. Whoa. Back it off, bro. Back it off. That was three clicks, bro. Ooh, boom. That's the sweet is it, spot. Is that the spot? That's the sweet spot. I missed spot. it. Boom. You know, that's funny. That's exactly where it was. Shut the front door. Nope. Maybe it was just the recording was too low. <laughs> Maybe. Hola. Hey. Welcome to Checkmarkville. <laughs> I think the recording is a little bit low. We did that for effect. Effect? Effect, effect, effect. And, and the fact. And independently and independently. <laughs> independently. But don't mess up your grammar. No. Because I'm looking for correct, correct grammar. Yes. How are you, sir? I'm looking for a man with the best of attentions. Welcome Not to? intentions. Beer Google. Attentions? Yes. Uh, yes. Pay your attention to the Googles of the beer. The Googs. Cervezas of the lace. Uh, Something? Cervezas de Googles. I like it. C. Si. And what... Oh, about what are we talking today, today? Before we start, I would like to make another special presentation of the third member of our DJ booth who's only here temporarily. It's a one day visit, ladies and gentlemen. What? To the great Cornholio. Oh, Cornholio. There you go, hey, sir. Hey, Beavis. Settle down, Beavis. Hey, Beavis. What rhymes with Venus? Uh, fly trap. <laughs> I remember that's my favorite joke from Beavis and Butthead. That's it. And Mike Judge. We have too many. Uh, we have too funny. many trinkets. So he. This is a temporary visit. El trinket hey del. We so have racist. too many trinkets. Why, dude? Look at the collection over there, bro. Oh, yeah, with, I didn't even put them up with today. With Baphomet and Special Agent Orange and Chewbacca oh, and two skulls and a pterodactyl. Uh, we have too much crap. The, are they in the screen today? Okay. Yeah, they in are. The today. We have too much crap, bro. Yeah. So well, I need. I need shelves. Shelving. Okay, so if you br if you do put a shelf up, then uh, Butthead will stay permanently, and I have one other temporary DJ who will make an appearance in later in the week. In addition to the Beavis. Yes. That's beautiful. Okay, yes. One more. Oh, next time? No, next, next time? time. Okay, next yeah. time. So he's Very. here for today. Boom. Pins and needles, my friend. Pins and needles. That sounds like you're masturbating. <laughs> on the I'm not doing This is Butthead. This is this is Making not. Sounds. This is not the polyamorous show with Christopher and Mark. Although I love you, I'm just not going to make love to you. Uh, uh, Welcome to Beer to Googles. Make love to you. Uh, look, Brian Adams, simmer That's down. It's heart, bro. I know, heart. but I just wanted to be dumb. I was like, that lady ate her co co singer. That's not she cool, man. Up. She got big. Her co singer is her sister, dude. Ew. That's cannibalism and first. It's like closer than first cousins. Uh, it's you, can you half eat, cousins. Can you eat your first cousin or closer relation, but just not bang them? Yes. Okay. Googles. Beer. Go. Yes. What's happening? Because we Today's haven't even talked about it. Subject, People have already turned this off. Ladies and germs is yeah. twofold. A we double have, fold. We have uh, origins of common phrases. One of my favorites. Some phrases that we come across. On a regular basis. On I heard one yesterday, basis. sir, on the golf broadcasting. Did you add it? I was already on my list. The golf channel pre-cogged me, bro, as I was watching the That's tournament beautiful. from La Jolla, California. Maybe you pre -cogged the golf pre-cogged the golf channel when you first came up with it. Uh it was a double it was a double it was that. a double cog. Double pre cog. Um I I need to interject also before we continue. Yes. But it is okay, there's a two fold. Two folder. Okay. Let, let's just do it. Yeah. I'll say it at the do end. It. I have to put a pin in it because we will go off the rails. These, what is the second fold, the sir? The rails on the crazy train. The second fold is amazing phrases by Megzi students. Because yes, they're awesome. But we have to be non doxical. So a teacher, yes. these are students in Student. a teacher's class. Yes. Someone who shall remain nameless. Are you going to have to edit me for that? No. Okay, not good. at all. Okay. But someone who shall remain, remain nameless. Classic. Because we don't have names or anything. Right. But there are some funny phrases. I have five of them. We're going to sprinkle them within inside that's of the common balls. phrases. And this is how I think phrases fucking start. When I look yeah. at the, that's kind of why I, I wanted, I thought they were kind of relating to each other. I felt like. The way kids process things are, it's so. Or process. Yes. And data or data. And right. It's so not structured. 
It's so knocked conscious. I, I don't know about that. Yeah. It's just not structured. And I love that because we have put limitations on our brains as we've gotten older over time. And it speaks for yourself. You, we all have, bro. I, I, don't, know I you have, have no limits, bro. You, that's a lie. None. You're, a, you're a fibber. None. <laughs> I you're defy it not working. It's not working. So we're going to do twofold. Jace. Two prong approach. One is two pronger origins of many common phrases that we come across. We jotted them down. Yes. As well as um, some, some munchkin children. phrases. Yeah, like a kid, almost like a mini kids say the darndest things. Y- yes. It's like there's I, there's so many, but not enough to there, have a full episode. Yeah. Not okay. enough to have a full episode. Also, more to not share them because they're pretty fucking funny. Because they're I mean. amazing. Yeah. And some, I haven't heard them yet. Yeah. And I've, I'm excited. I, I Some of them are pretty fucking hilarious. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to oversell it, but I am. Okay. TD Kaka. I don't want to oversell it. But I am, he says. Go ahead. No, no now start because it's your turn. All right, are we ready Get to rock? Get off me, bro. Are we? I know that shit <laughs> makes me laugh. Dude. You know what I love? What is, is that? Is that we invested money into a bunch of video equipment, yeah, and we've like committed to this whole thing. Yeah, we have like thirteen total views. I know that twelve for me, bro. I think the thirteenth was a mistake. They were looking for like a Slayer video, <laughs> and we're talking total on the entire channel. <laughs> It's like no one fucking watches it. Then what am I doing this for? Because I, I love you. I think we this, have to. Com- I have to stay committed to it. I want to be I think, committed. I think this is what's going to happen. I think eventually someone's going to go. Hey, we came across these guys. Hey, they look like they're laughing and having a good time. Now, nah, then they'll catch. It'll catch. Okay. That's what I think's going to happen. When? <laughs> <laughs> You're not clairvoyant. You're precognitive, but oh, not clairvoyant. I'm precognitive. Good luck uh, on a time frame. It's going to be a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, it could be a month. Your, it could be twelve years. Grab your we don't know. Oh, it's not going to be. A grab month. your what? I'll grab some snacks. Oh, get snacks. comfortable. Grab a pillow, little blankie. Pillow. Fucking cry yourself Huge to sleep. Pillow. Um, so we're gonna do phrases and darnest kids phrases, which are funny because they're so fucking original. Like, but I think this is how other weird phrases come come to be i would not disagree with that so i think you should start with the first one because you have a lot more awesome i only have ones. like 11 teen. Yeah, right billion. 11 teen. 11 Ele- billion 11, teen 11 billion. billion alex <laughs> you ready to rock yes sir the I'm first ready. phrase that i've jotted down sir fly by the seat of your pants love it the pantalones simply in fuego no fly arrow, by the seat of your pants something fly by the seat of your pants is parlance from the early days of aviation, aircraft initially flew. I'm going to start over. Aircraft initially had few navigation aids, and flying was accomplished by means of a pilot's judgment. The term emerged in the 1930s and was first widely used in reports of Douglas Corrigan's flight from the USA to Ireland in 1938. Douglas Corrigan was described as an aviator. Quote, who flies by the seat of his pants by a mechanic who helped him rejuvenate the plane, which airport men have now nicknamed the spirit of $69.90 because it was a piece of poop. The old flying expression of flies by the seat of his trousers was explained by Larry Connor, meaning going aloft without instruments, radio, or other luxuries. Mm. So like, Pockets are inside out. You got nothing. Correct. You are without pants. That is pantless. Interesting. Uh, it's not like assless chaps. Not assless. Not chaps. like that at all. But flying without pants. All right. How, what do you feel about that one? I love it. 1930s. Yeah. It does. I love the expression. I just don't feel like. I feel like the translation or the origin is like kind of lame on that one. I just don't get it. Do you like, need some espresso? Or espresso, possibly. Espresso. Yeah. No, no, I don't need it quickly. Do you do you want to hear something funny? Uh, our, su- our super <laughs> no, senior executive producer. No, be producer, boring to me. Ha, uh, ha, ha, our ha, super ha. senior executive producer, Mary, ha. she hates it when people pronounce the word exit. Egg-zit. Some like people pronounce it. Pe- some people pronounce it with the G. Yeah, like eggs. Eggs. It. And she exit. loses her shit, and it's funny as poop. Because it's not exit? Exit. 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 Not exit. Yeah. There's there's no G's, bro. There's no yokes in the <laughs> on the off ramp. Two Utes. <laughs> What's a Ute? Would you like me to do a phrase? Yes. Or child uttering? Because I only have five of each. Phrase. Phrase. Okay, you ready? Yes. 
This is one of my favorite ones, and I totally forgot. But when you're watching two pugilists. What the fuck is a pugilist? Boxers, fighters. Okay, thank you. Pugilist. Uh, uh, um, MMA people, whatever. They have themselves a good old-fashioned Donnie Brook. Okay. And I was like, where the fuck? What? Donnie Brook? I've never heard. You never heard of good I've only heard it because you've said it a couple times. Okay. I don't know what it means. Okay. Yeah, so they have a good old-fashioned Donnybrook. The word Donnybrook is a bit of an old-fashioned word, but is still occasionally used, especially in North America, New Zealand, Australia. Basically, it's an occasion that is a bit of an uproar, a chaotic brawl or heated disagreement. So usually it works with fighters because they're basically punching each other's brains out. So they're having themselves a good old-fashioned Donnybrook. But it came from the Donnybrook Fair. Okay, where's which that? Started in like 1206. Wow. CE until like the 1800s, till the mid 1800s. So this is like 800 years ago. Yeah. Wow. So this one's like super old. Like I thought like Donnie was a the first, like somebody who recorded the first fight at a brook, like at a crick, like a crick. I had a, oh, we're at the Donnie brook. <laughs> like it's like Donnie's, <laughs> like Donnie's brook yes. or something. And, but that's who fought in the first fight or scuffle. So that's how it got recorded. Okay. But it had nothing to do with that. It had to do with this Donnie brook fair at which people were fucking uh, Arizona State Fairing it, being just. They were ridiculous. eating elephant ears and deep fried sugar dough. I think they were uh, and... demolition carting. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So can, where yeah. is this? Why is it called Donnybrook? It's in Donnybrook. I is think. that it's the city place. or yeah, the, the locale? It's location, Ireland. Yeah. Okay. Donnybrook, Ireland. Okay. There's a public fair held in Donnybrook, Ireland from like 1206 to like the mid 1800s or something. And then they stopped... They just said, fuck it. <laughs> we're tired. Apparently. It's been 600 years. We're tired of this shit. Fuck it. Let's right. cancel. We're getting ourselves a bad reputation, boys. We got to get out of here. <laughs> got to close the Donnybrook. Please don't beat me up, Irish people. I'm just fucking around. It's not that bad. No, my tip of the top of the morning is pretty good. But I just want them to know that I'm not saying it to make fun of them. No. I love it. I love the little accent they got there. It's it's kind of a crazy thing that's going on. I, don't, I never know what's going on there. It's pretty crazy. So now I sound like the woman from uh, Boardwalk Empire. The, oh. the, the girlfriend of I, Lucky. I didn't see. No? I saw like, the first two or three seasons. And then I, good. I need to watch it. Yeah, he's amazing. I need to watch it. Because I know it. Maybe you should just tell me the ending. I don't. Uh, Prohibition ends, I bet. Oh, shit. I'm going to guess. Because you're a historian. <laughs> I think it's time for your next phrase. Though, Here we sir. go. You ready? I am ready. This is taken. Directly from an amazing movie, Office Space. The jump to conclusions, Matt. Where did the term jump to conclusions come from? I was like, I don't know. That's really smart. I, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad I can enlighten you. I love And I learned, actually learned something when I did research for this dumb podcast. Officially, the term is jump, the jumping conclusion bias. Often abbreviated JTC. Uh, look, look at, check out this brainiac shit right here. Also referred to as the inference observation confusion. Jumping to conclusions is a psychological term referring to a communication obstacle where one judges or decides something without having all the facts. La 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 la, blah, 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 blah. It involves making decisions without having enough information to be sure that one is right. It can give rise to poor, rash decisions. However, it does, does not say where it started from. So that's dumb. That's I don't know where it first started. I apologize. That I, is awful. I, I, am the, you, I am the worst researcher in the history of researchers. Get, I am so, so sorry. I don't have a booing thing, but I almost would be you tempted should boo the, me. for the first I time totally, ever. I totally, totally, uh, I did learn some cool stuff, psychological terms, but I don't know. I'm going to make some shit up. In 1958, <laughs> in Greenwich, Scotland... The jumping to conclusions, Matt, was invented. First. <laughs> At the Donnybrook Fair. I love you so much, but I've never had much this much loathing for you That's ever fun. in my life. Bro, prepper you are the you are the preacher, the fucking flag bearer of preparation. And you're like, let's do an origin. Okay, okay. Easy. Easy. What? Turbo. 
You, you don't get button privileges after that f- I'll falafel. Do I want. <laughs> What's a, I called it a falafel. That's pretty funny. There is no damn only Zool. It's just a shame, man. You don't even know. That. How do you do an orange show, origin show without an origin? Tell you me didn't that, know where sir. Donnybrook was, fucker. Back off. Ireland. I read it. You, I read it that one time. It was right there, but was, you read un, unknown. The origin is unknown. Back to you, check mark. <laughs> Let's do another origin. How about this one, my friend? Let's do some kid phrases, fucker. In for a penny, in, in for, for a pound. pound. I like that. Use to express someone's intention to complete an enterprise once it has been undertaken. However much time, effort, or money it entails. It's you're kind of in all in. Is pound referring to like a dollar in the UK? It was, okay. and that's what's interesting. It's what not I, a pound as in weight. Right. Okay. What I found interesting about that is they kept penny and they kept pound even in the North American. They did not convert it to, to dollar. dollar. Even though we had the penny. Or the yen or the peso. Wow, that would be really weird if it was like, weird. if like some guy in Brooklyn's like, hey, you know, in for a penny, in, in, in for, for a peso. peso. <laughs> of course he picked the same fucking one. Well, because it rhymes, I penny, started, peso. I was going to start with a yen though, because penny no. and yenny. Oh, a yen, yen, I, yeah. In for a penny, in for a yenny. <laughs> I don't know. A loony or a toonie in Canada. There you go. Loony and a toonie. But uh, yeah, so basically it's one of those things is like, hey, I've I've uh, put something into this and now I'm fully committed. Yes, I dig it. Um, but I did find it, like I said, the in, the thing about this one that interested me was more that it was uh, it the conversion fact. It wasn't in for a penny or for a dollar. It didn't come turn to that. Because everything gets Americanized. I mean, we mar- Americanize pretty much everything. We have a fucking... We don't use a metric system, for goodness sakes. Yeah, I know. Let's not talk about it. I'm just saying. Very it's upset like, about that. Oh, no. I'm not even upset. I'm just saying it's like, we do things so differently. It's interesting that we kept that phrase pound. That's true. That is a good point. Just, just a unique head scratcher. Yeah. All right. Is there a date when that started? Uh, yeah, 1600s or so, wow. I believe, or something like that. That's yeah. also when the Jump to Conclusions map was <laughs> released That's right. in Northern Scotland. Scotland. Late 1600s. I wonder if they did the Jump to Conclusions map when they invented Much. golf as well. Because you'll have a fucking stroke. <laughs> anyway. May I move along? Um, please. Put your money where your mouth is. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Back up your stated position with action. La 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 la. The term, according to Eric Partridge's, was current in the ni- in the nineteen thirties in the United States and caught on in Great Britain and other English speaking countries after World War II. You got a thing for the thirties, bro. In ni- get this shit. In nineteen seventy five, when I was a wee lad, the British government used it in advertising slogans to persuade people to invest their savings. In the National Savings Bank Accounts Department. There's actually three other phrases that that phrase comes from, which I found very interesting. And I'm not making it up for reals. In 1881, put their money where their faith is. Okay. Put your money where your interests are, 1905. I wonder if faith actually meant faith or if it was like also figurative faith. Like I, faith I, in a product. I'm or wondering faith. if it's both. Right. But I'm curious if it did start with religion because it's like tithing, right? Put your yes. money where your faith is. Right. Just I, I, I Just believe you're correct. Uh, lastly, put your money where your heart is. Dates back to 1915. So the three are put your money where your faith is. Yes. Interest. Interest. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh. Put your money where your heart is. Put your money where your faith is. Put your money where your interests, interests are. Interests are. Okay. And the, the heart, original dates back interest. to 1881. Very nice. Mother Trucker. It's a good one, man. You're like welcome. That, one. that one's that one's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, real motherfucking cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, sir. Go. To hell in a handbasket. So going to hell in a basket. La 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 la. The origin of the phrase hell in a handbasket, although much debated, has been attributed to the gold rush where men were lowered by hand in baskets down mining shafts to set the dynamite, which could have deadly consequences. Bum, bum, bum. 
Um, however, the usage probably dates much earlier with either baskets used to catch what guillotined heads. That makes sense. Or maybe as far back as Bible's account in Exodus of Moses being placed in a handmade basket. But he huh. didn't go to hell. He got rescued. He was down the Nile in a handbasket. Yeah. That's interesting. But the guillotine one makes sense too. Yeah. Hell in a handbasket because um, your head is in the handbasket. So there's multiple reasons for this, but I just thought hell in a handbasket was a really cool one. So I agree. Uh, but the gold rush makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And due to the fact that you just came up with that one, it made me think of another one, bro. Totally off the cuff and stuff. I love cuffs. HR, cuff and stuff. Are you ready? Um, yeah. What are your last thoughts on the Baskets of Hell? Uh, that's my second favorite Slayer album. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a good song. The next man. phrase, come hell or high water, oh, is what just nice. popped in my cabeza. Is that brain it or head? It means uh, cabeza is, uh, is head. Okay. Uh, come or hell or high water like it. It means you are willing to do whatever it takes to overcome difficulty or obstacles first noted in 1882 i think that's on one of our other episodes isn't was it, it? I think oh it been. shit i think it might have been but i don't remember Boop. <laughs> you know what i really hope it is fuck you why because we fucking we're human okay uh, i'll just finish this and then we'll yeah, fucking get, up, get off me bro yeah, so bro. it goes back to the burlington <laughs> weekly hawkeye newspaper since the time the best of my friends had become enemies and strangers had become friends. D the devil had broke loose in many parts of the country, keeping up with the old saying, we've had unrevised hell and high water and a mighty heap of high water, I tell you. Back to you. Wow. Sure hope that wasn't on a previous episode, Frank. <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> Fuck you. No. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I'm not criticizing hell and high water. I love that phrase. That's an awesome one. I didn't mean riveting in that way. I meant riveting. Like, we fucking duped. I think we fucking DJ. Do we dupe ourselves? I think we... <laughs> Did we previously pre-cog <laughs> ourselves? Do we post-cog ourselves? We, oh, post cog is mean, the worst. Post-cogging is the worst. Yeah. Um. So here's one. I hope... Now I'm starting to question oh, whether we did shit. this one, too. Hitch in the giddy-up. I don't, I don't think, think we, we did. did. But Hitch in the giddy-up... <laughs> American expressions, or is an American expression associated with lingo from the Old West. The unorganized territories west of the Mississippi River from 1803 to 1890. Hitch for a long time is referred to making a jerking movement from which... Um, yeah, so make jerking movement. Hitch. Like hitch. <laughs> and the giddy-up, the giddy-up, or get-along. Sometimes it's called hitch and get-along. Don't, don't. Do the horse sound, bro. We're down by the river. I tell you what. Happy trail. Mother trucker. To, to you. To <laughs> we me again. again. <laughs> um, yeah, so hitching the giddy up. So the get along giddy up is the movement, right? Is the riding. So when they had a hitch, it was an issue. Up, it was like, ow. So, like, they hurt their leg, whatever. So, whenever you get up in the morning, you're like, oh, I got a little hitch in my giddy up. Uh, I yes. don't think Sorry. I've ever uttered that phrase before. Really? Really. Not one time in my life, but I'm going to start using it now. Whenever, I've, like, whenever I hurt my pinky toe, I'm going to be like, oh, man, I got a hitch in my giddy up. My left giddy up oh. has given me problems Is it for, derailed? 30, like for 30 years. Oh, because so. you, that's because you, uh, <laughs> you're, you're a pivoter. I took, I took, I took a little blow to the femur just above the knee ladies and gentlemen so my hitch has been giddy up my giddy up's been hitched for a long time so yeah i've used that one a couple times it's just i think it's a cool phrase though i dig it you should use that one and we still need to use fuckwits more and, I, i'm i and haven't also tony's amazing phrase gaggle of cunts gaggle of that's cunts. my also other favorite <laughs> of amazing uk people's um, yeah <laughs> i'm i'm really on board with that because uh Fuck wait, I just haven't used it. I'm very disappointed in myself. Okay, that's our, that's your goal for this week, bro. You got to use at least two fuck twits. Fuck wits. Fuck wits. fuck wits. Yeah. And three hitches and giddy ups. That's your 
repentance I think you for need this to week. use hitching giddy ups and gaggle of cunts uh just once so <laughs> i think you're good once outside of this room okay not on the podcast okay okay Don't worry. You, yes i'm gonna make it happen <laughs> making it happen all right my friend next up is a phrase that i got from my father that he used quite frequently and i didn't know the origin of it so i was like i'm gonna add this shit to the list my dad uses the term low key oh quite like frequently it. and i didn't like i don't know what that means Look, low key, may i guess it please. may i guess okay so yeah i'm thinking if you're in you have a keychain, so you have a succession of keys and the first one in the front would be the most important first one in the front would be most important okay so the one at the top yeah would be most important so you go to a place where the one at the bottom is the least important that no one can bother you because you want to keep it small or keep it quiet so you go to the lowest key whoa <laughs> so uh, like bullshit, wait a minute, isn't it? Wait a minute. Wait, so did you just think of that just right now? Yes. Dude, that's really fucking good. <laughs> and so wrong. And totally incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get you anymore. I, know you I already blew my anymore. load on that shit. You blew your load Dude, on that was the so first good. One. And totally wrong. I know, but <laughs> think about how out of the box that thought was. Like, okay, so okay, okay. Stay with me. So you have a keychain. Okay. And there's many keys on it. Yeah. And there's one that's lower that doesn't mean shit. No. Well, you go lower down the keychain, don't you go? Don't, isn't your most important key like your house key in the front? No, because on the top or whatever. I know if fobs and now, I have but a I'm key just thinking, ring. I'm, I know, but even a ring, equal. right? But technically, you usually, I usually actually hold my. They're in order though, from most important to least important. They may not. They might zhuzhi when they. they might <laughs> zhuzhi, when they zhuzh in your pocket, you take them out. Yeah, but when you grab your say your most important key, the house key, for example. Yes. The next important key is in succession on the ring. It's just uh, when it, they get judged in your pants, so that you might pull out the third most important key. I understand. So they're still in a succession order, so you could still have a low key. I, I understand. I think I did very well with that. I think you're expression. completely, totally full of shit. Sh should I? Should we play Balderdash? Do you think that one would think people would have bought that one? Uh, not me. <laughs> uh, who would have bought that shit? Who? All of shit. the students of someone's certain class. You leave my you leave my graduate class and we're out of this. <laughs> God bless them, everyone. God bless them. Everyone. Would you like me to get on with this shit show? Yes. What do you call poop fiesta? What do we say? Poop parade. <laughs> poop parade. Fecal, fecal fiesta. fiesta. <laughs> Low key dates back to the early 1800s. Okay, it would appear to have musical origins characterizing something that has having a deeper more muted or darker tonal register we can find low key for of a low pitch in the early 1900s low key expanded for something more casual or easygoing or chill that is also very funny i, th I think we did that one too we did not you dude no Please uh, tell me we didn't. Just mess with it. I don't You're remember. Such dick shit. Don't like, I'm oh very paranoid. I'm now going over it. all my lists. Like, oh god, oh, I did no. all these already. That's crazy. I did them all. This is my last one before we get into the children's. Oh, we're not going to break them up. Crazy things. Well, I'm going to sprinkle them in every other because they're okay. still going to go back you. and forth. Yeah, 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 but yeah. this is my last phrase that I have that, okay. I, that I came across. Yes. Off like a herd of turtles. <laughs> Do, is 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 multiple turtles called a herd? I don't a think gaggle? it is. A, a it's like gander? a gaggle of cunts. <laughs> <laughs> is it a, ga a gaggle of turtle cunts? Turtle cunts. So, <laughs> off like a herd of turtles basically is uh, <sighs> thundering along like a herd of turtles is another way to say it as well. So, like when we're slow getting somewhere, we're like like a herd of turtles. Really fucking slow, obviously. Yes, they're not. A, they're not a herd of hare. No, you know what I mean. Yeah, they're a herd of tur tortoise, 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 tortoises, tortoise, tortugas, tortuga. Hey, also fucker. a good beer. Yeah. So basically, this off like a herd of turtles, slow, pro so slow start to any process. I like that. 
Yeah. I, I was. Uh, I would like to add a new phrase that someone told me a couple months ago that I think should catch on. As slow as a turtle through maple syrup. <laughs> and I'm like, that's wow, pretty, that's pretty yeah. fucking slow. That's I, really I, I, it's not, slow. It's a very new phrase, and I love yeah. it, and I think it should catch on. I feel like molasses would have a higher okay. effect. Yes. Slower than a turtle through, through molasses. Because molasses. molasses has that cool Thickness. like phrase. Yeah, and it's got that phraseology, and just the word molasses paints the picture of what it is. Of Yes. Like, you don't get the word molasses confused with like a corkscrew. Uh, cor or maple syrup and a corkscrew. Well, yeah. I understand your point. I'm just saying something about molasses. There's no sexual overtone to the word molasses. All right. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. So herd of turtles, slow group of people and all that good stuff. So that's Did, my last is phrase. Is there I a... Dating back to on that sucker? There, I didn't see a dating back to, and I was on the origin page. So, well, poop. I'm really, 18, sh I'm worse than you are at this, 14. but I don't claim to be organized. So, I don't. Fuck you. Next up, <laughs> after low key, That's not nice, is man. low profile. Whoa, boom. Okay. This one's easy. Shut the front door. I'm gonna guess. Okay, what year was it coined around? 1926. Totally wrong. What country? Denmark. Wrong. Next. UK. Nope. Really? Really. Profile. Well, it's got to be France. Nope. I'm done, man. The what United States of America. Oh, okay. 1970. I, okay, I felt like it was a gangster kind of thing, almost like a low profile. Uh, no. So if you have a low profile, yeah. you purposely don't attract a lot of attention. <gasps> don't, don't, don't. Movie stars, if you hate publicity or being in the spotlight, you probably keep a low profile. People with low profiles don't tend to speak in public, wear flashy clothes, crazy costumes, or get in loud arguments with their friends at restaurants. Check mark. The term is also an adjective is when you describe a low profile political campaign or a low profile writer who lives in your town. Low profile. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, it All seems right. like the 70s is a late time that uh, that started, but that's amazing. Maze balls. Okay. Yes. I'm going to I'm gonna paint a story for you. I'm so looking forward to this. I, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to rank them, but I do, there, there are some that are better than others. I'm not trying to rank them, but I'm going to rank them. I'm going to put them in order that I think is like most, from least impactful to most impactful, because I want to build. Okay. Build to a nice... Crescendo. I was gonna say crescendo, we should look bro. up where that word comes from. Because crescendo meant explosion. I think. Oh, it's, it did. Yeah, it's a. It's actually a, a composer term as well. Build to a crescendo. It's the whole thing. Okay. I I think. Wow. <laughs> you sound really distant. I know. I'm leaning. Okay. Hey. Hey guys. How you guys doing over there? Okay. Great. I'm, le I'm leaning back. Fucker. <laughs> Waiting for the crescendo. So here it is. A couple of years ago, a young lady was in a friend of mine's class, and when she gets upset, she starts taking off her clothes. Oh, dear. And she had gone to the store. Dude, I do that too, bro. No, you sleep You sleep undress. I do? I don't know. I don't. I, go I've ahead. never watched you sleep. I don't think we've ever slept in the same room together. We haven't. Thank same house. On a couch before, like someone's oh, crashed. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Before. If we were lit. Yeah, yeah hey, man, not, just crashed yeah, on the couch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sleep it off for a couple hours or something. But um, anyway, so this young lady had bought these really cool shoes that when you walk, they light up. Like, you know, L, what, LA Gear started those things yes. back in the 80s, I think, right? So light up shoes. They're, they're the coolest things. Law Gear. Kids. So these are kids. It is still, I'm going to say, elementary school okay. at the time. And this young woman proceeds to take clo clothes off, including the shoes. She takes them and she throws them in the trash. And my friend, who is supervising this this little person at the time, is like, "You, you know, you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that." And she goes, "I don't need light up shoes in my life." <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought. When I heard that story, I don't need light up shoes in my life. It's like a second grader. 
I don't need light up shoes in my life. That's genius. It is. I don't know. I, we should have ended with that. Honestly, yeah. it's that good. I don't need light, light up shoes in my life. If that's not existential for simplify your life, I don't know what is. Minimize the Roger crap. Minimize. Yeah, minimize. Yeah, I like it. Clean, clean. I like what you're going with this, man. You know what I mean? Yes. Cleanse. Yeah. Minimize. It's beautiful. I don't need light up shoes in my life. And that phrase is uttered in this household often because it's one of those things. Because it's amazing. I don't need light up shoes in my life. I don't need mushrooms in my life. We don't want mushrooms in our lives either. That's totally a different thing. All right, so that was my first uh, child phrase uh, slash quote slash uh, endearment, Thingy. enlightenment. Back to you. Next up on my list, sir. Pigeonholed. Oh, nice. I was like, where did that shit come from? I'm going to guess. Oh, sure. Fuck it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Pigeons, when they returned the housing, were holes that they crawled into. So each pigeon had a designated spot, like its own coop, when they returned, like homing pigeons. So when they crawled back in, boom, they were pigeonholed. Don't do it. I fucking hate you because that's fucking right. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> See, that's where I'm in the box. <laughs> See, I didn't think of that. And then when I read the definition, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of fucking sense. That's what out of the box thinking Fuck does, you, sir. Dude. No, so, okay, so please explain it again because I probably in, didn't explain pigeon it. Pigeon well. hold. In medieval times, pigeons were kept as domestic birds, not for racing, but for their meat. Pigeon holes were the openings set in a wall or a purpose built pigeon cote or coat, C O T E. In which the birds nested. By 1789, the arrangement of compartments in writing cabinets and offices used to sort and file documents have come to be known as pigeonholes. The pigeonhole was being used in the mid 19th century as a verb meaning to either put a matter to one side with the intention of coming back later or to classify information. Also known in the UK as mailboxes. I was like, all, Interesting. Or pigeon cubbies was also pigeon another cubby. another phrase that I found. Because I eat chips and crisps instead of fries and chips. That is correct. It makes no it's sense. Really good. They eat chips and yes. crisps instead of fries and chips. Correct. So their chips aren't even our chips, mate. Correct. That was a horrible British. I don't accent. know. Do we have time? That was pretty good. I know. I was I was doing a lot of John Cleese today. Yeah. But I was doing John Cleese impersonating a French person from Holy Grail. <laughs> Cause Ma- so it's not a French person Maxie or John Cleese, but it's an f- impersonation of John Cleese doing a French person. Yes, impersonating a French person, French person from the castle. I fought in your general direction. Oh, we have this stupid <laughs> accent. Different movie, but. I fought in your general direction. I just love that. It's great. So I don't need light up shoes in my life. Where's live by pigeonholed. We are, we're on pigeonholed, right? We were. Yeah. Okay. Not anymore. No, no, no we're That's done. That's it. That is all. Okay. Don't pigeonhole me, bro. Get off me, bro. <laughs> okay. Um, are you ready for the next I, I'm so ready. genius child? I'm so ready. A child uh-huh. had spoken to another friend of mine. Happens to be the same friend who's also supervising this child during, how, let's say, class hours. How many childs is this friend supervising at one time? I'm trying most, to get a lay of the I land think it's here. Eight is eight. like most. I think it's all it is. Okay. It's eight. But so it's, it's a small eight classroom. Special children. Okay. So it's a small classroom in pre COVID times. Is this correct? Yeah, but now in, now in COVID times. Okay. She, she oh. does it. Yeah, it still happens. She okay. has face to face with them. Face to face. Every day, I believe. But anyway. I think it's eight of them, but regardless, when they got back from a certain break that happened after December, you know, just late December break. Holiday break. Sure. Let's go with holiday break. They come back and this child was sharing all the gifts that they got from Ho-Ho. What? (laughs) Ho-Ho got them all the gifts. Hell yeah. Yeah. 
It's it, but it's genius. It's fu- it's like how we use metaphor. Like it's like how we use similes, metaphors to explain things. Like I got it from Ho Ho because what is what, what does Santa, Santa do? Say. Right. It's like it's a direct connection to something. Char- a characteristic of Santa Claus, right? Like I could have been like, I got it from fat belly, or I got it from red cheeks, or I got it from white beard, or fat drunken red coat guy. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he smells like Ho-Ho. whiskey. I fucking I think that's genius. That's I got these gifts from Ho Ho, and you're like the. F- but with our because of the way we close our minds as adults, it takes just a little minute for us to connect it back to the original where if, if they said that to another child like i don't feel there would be a delay i, feel I like, would agree i feel like they'd understand ho ho in a heart heartbeat i, I thought it perhaps was one of santa's slutty elves that's kind of where i was thinking um you need to get laid bro well it, who it doesn't but that's oh, not the point no, we all yes true okay that's true that was unkind it's not just you it's everybody does we all need to get laid yeah that's yeah, true so <laughs> but i'm just saying ho ho i that's you need to get laid a few more how about a little uh, more m- yes Slightly who doesn't more? okay we everyone all need needs to, more also but we all need love and bro you need more plus one i don't know that's not it's faith Cause, plus one because it's hair club plus one. Uh, yeah, love plus sign one. me up for hair club plus one. Please. Haircut plus one, wasn't it? Or what's that? Love plus one. Haircut one hundred. Haircut, haircut one hundred is an eighties alternative one. band. Yeah, love plus one. Was, was that their song? song? Yeah, yeah okay. I think so. Yeah, haircut one hundred. I hear them all the time. Yeah, a band no one's ever heard of. Uh, uh, it, it's the one hit wonder one. It's always Correct. the one hit wonder. Correct. Eighties group. So yeah, getting gifts from Ho Ho. I love Ho Ho. I think Ho Ho. Ho Ho's like my favorite I elf know. and or, or and, Smurf or. Whatever. And a delicious treat. Munchkin. Sweet treat to have Who in between love some cream. Is not right. You love ho hos. Oh, all right. Ding dongs, Twinkies, all that stuff. Tasty all the cakes. hostess treats, bro. Tasty cakes are still oh, the best. Yeah. I don't care. Little Debbie's. I don't care that they don't make them in Philly anymore. Oh, Tasty cakes no. are the best. Go. No, off me, bro. Next is Leap <laughs> of Faith. To believe in something or someone based on faith rather than evidence. An attempt to achieve something that has little chance of success. This idiom first appeared in the mid-1800s. However, it shot up in popularity around mid-1900s. It is from the translation from Latin. Saltus Fidei. A Danish philosopher, a guy I can't pronounce, Soren Kindergarten Gershuber, came up. Chocolate mousse. Bork, bork, bork. Danish, not Swedish, but close enough. The Danish philosopher Soren Kindergarten. Also a delicious breakfast treat. Came up with the expression as a metaphor for the religious belief in God. He argued that God was spiritual rather than physical and was completely separate from the material world of man. Therefore, God cannot be understood through science or logic. A leap of faith. Mother trucker. How come no motherfucking religious zealot has fucking given me that as a fucking reason? I can almost eat that. I can almost buy that. Do you want me to keep going? There was like two other sentences. Yeah. Okay. Uh, He argued that God was spiritual rather than physical and was completely separate from the material world of man. Yeah. yeah. Therefore, God could not be understood through science or logic. Yeah. One could only understand God through faith alone. Despite these religious origins, this idiom is now used in everyday conversation. For example, someone can use this expression to signify that he or she is taking a risk merely, merely hoping for the best. That. I was king. I can buy like forest. holy shit. God's not of the physical world, which is correct, because, right? Because well, well, no, the because, Jesus part. Well, the Bible states he created. So if he's not part of the physical world, he couldn't have created. I'm wondering well, how who's shitting on that fucking side okay, right off the on, bat. Hang on. So isn't every religious belief ever a leap of faith? Unless you were there to witness it, isn't that a leap of faith? Yes. Okay. That's not the point, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I then, then but, please but go. But that's an excellent... No, I mean, you make an excellent point. Yes. Every every 
every belief in something that you can't measure or test in a scientific way is a, a faith leap. Yeah, it's ultimately. just how big or small, right? Right, it just depends on the degree of it, right? It could be like, uh, do I believe that you told you texted me that you're 10 minutes away? Do I believe that kind of thing? Like, yeah, I believe that you're 10 minutes away because you told me you are. Well, okay, would you that's consider... A leap of faith. I know that's stupid. That's a stupid analogy. Would you consider example. buying a lottery ticket a leap of faith? Sure, why not? I mean, it's, it's definitely a risk. It's a gamble. Is well, what you're call spending two dollars. Yeah, it's a gamble. Is what I'd call that. Okay, it's just like a what about a petty jackpot gamble is what, for two bucks. Well, isn't the f idea that the sun sun will rise tomorrow a leap of faith? W uh, an asteroid could hit the Earth and split it in half in the middle of the night, and we're all gone. But that's a point zero 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 six percent chance. Right. But so I it is a leap of faith. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, the, isn't that a leap of faith? The leap of faith is that it that today will act like to, like yesterday did. I guess that's the leap, which is not necessarily but, the case. But science over the over this currently calm period of our Earth time, yeah. which is pretty calm. I mean, we have some earthquakes, yeah. and fires, and and they're bad. Don't I mean? I'm not. Don't get me right. wrong. We've got global warming. We've got climate change and mm -hmm. things. But as a whole, we don't have hundreds of thousands of comets hurl, hurling at us at any time or whatever, right? We're not, it's, you know, it's pretty decent, pretty decent time. Um, that it would be like that tomorrow, just because it's been like that for the last, say, 5,000 years. Sun has risen, sun has set. I'm just going to assume it's probably more of an assumption than a leap of faith. But if, but if we were going to get picky about it, yes, it is specifically a leap of faith. It is a leap of faith. Because we have faith it's going to happen. Right. That doesn't it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's correct. We we yeah. think that it will. Right. Yeah. Without anything else changing. Yes. The probability is very likely. Correct. Very very high. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I mean the see you tomorrow thing is probably a phrase that we should probably look into because maybe that was in by saying it that would ensure it. Maybe that was a jinx kind oh, of thing. It's hopeful, right? Right. Right? Cuz like <laughs> back in the day yeah. I don't know if you saw somebody tomorrow. Right. There are a lot of fucking change. P it is it's ugly out there, don't get me wrong. But we were fucking really bad to each other for a very long time. Way worse than how we treat each other now. Yes. Pretty bad. So, like, see you tomorrow was probably like a Oh fuck! I hope I see you tomorrow. Or well, you could also say, "I'll see you tomorrow, asshole." Oh, that's so true. you you know, right. oh, because there's going to be a fight at that's the OK true. Corral at noon. That may have been adopted though after the original. Hey, time. maybe we shouldn't be saying it so mean, fucker. Yeah. And we should be saying, "I'll see you tomorrow, sweetie." I'll see you tomorrow. Oh my god, as I got you like a fish. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow because we're gonna have brunch, bitches. <laughs> oh my god, and then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sour apple in your ass. <laughs> That's the best verb I've ever heard. Sour apple. Sour I mean, apple. Sour apple. <laughs> sour apple. Fuck yeah. All right. So leap of faith. I I find it interesting. What are your thoughts about the spiritual not being physical? Like, because like I said, if it's spiritual, then he couldn't have created, in my opinion, because it couldn't have been physical. <sighs> Back on Eva. Get off me, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh. I see both sides of it. I see your point about if if God truly is spiritual, then it's not possible to create something, right? Mm -hmm. If that if that being truly is one hundred percent spiritual, can that being create? That's that. I mean, that's a philosophical question. That's well. I'm going to take a leap of faith and say it's never going to be answered. Oh, because it's always going to be debatable. C correct. You, so I'm sorry. We all will have our estimates of the origins of anything. I'm sorry. I put this on the list. Go ahead. Because we've never been, we've never been there. We're not there. We didn't see it. Like even with all the evidence pointing to this X, Y, or Z, we'll never have witnessed it happening. So we wouldn't know whether it's, Right, whether it's yes. legit, yeah, of so course. It that's what's beautiful about that, but also kind of creepy. Like, not no, creepy, I don't think it's creepy. I don't know if creepy is the right word, but no. like, but it's challenging because like, yes. you'll never have an answer, but you're striving to answer at all times. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. the relentless pursuit of poop. 
I like I like relentless pursuits of poop. <laughs> I've got two more. Please. No, three more. I'll do this one. This one's good. So a friend of mine was supervising another youngster. It's happening a lot. Talking to other youngsters in a little classroom. And the one youngster was like flexing, you know, like muscle flexing Boom. and like, oh my gosh, how did I get all these muscles talking to this other kid? And he's like, oh, I know. It's because I breathe all night when I sleep. <laughs> Amazing. I love that one. Like, so that has nothing to do with like bro, pro protein powder or squats. Bro, you don't you don't you don't no. breathe all all day when you're when you're awake. Nope. It's only when you're breathing when you sleep yeah, is why day. you have all these muscles. Oh, I know I have all these muscles. It's because I breathe all night when I sleep. Fuck yeah. And when I get these when I get these texts and screenshots, and I'm just like, oh, this is beautiful. And I take it down. I jot it down. And I have two more, and they're so fucking funny. You're such a teaser, bro. I know. But it's your turn, man. But okay. What do you have to say about that one? I love it. I think the kids should breathe more. He'll be huge in Japan. Why? why I'm sorry. Why, I crisscrossed yeah. the streams, bro. <sighs> Don't worry. No one's watching. Hey, everybody. <laughs> while, every, while you're all out there listening, please listen to us, rate us, review us, follow, subscribe. Tell Download. us. Yeah, tell us some phrases you came across. Yeah, that's Tell us some thought. topics you'd like us to talk about. Some crazy kid stories, crazy kid phrases, all that stuff. Keep it on you, bro. Get off me, bro. Okay, Keep next up, yeah. blackmail. Where did the term blackmail come from? I do not, I would not be knowing. Uh -oh, I'm just going to guess, has a guess that black was the ominous nature of the mail that they received, not the color. So it was it was male of an ominous nature, which was black male, like black magic. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. I, I, this is another one, dude. I found very interesting. Yeah, I'm really because interested. there are other colors besides black male. Oh, there's green male. Oh, I, I didn't know that. So it is. So it is a. And there's uh white male. Is it by the ominous nature then? Let or me. The, yeah, oh, I will sorry. get to that. Sorry. The word black male. Okay. Wait, wait. So there's black, green, and white male. Hang Those on. Those are your three. Uh, 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 red, I think. Red rum, red rum, red rum. Uh, the word blackmail is variously derived from the, from the word for tribute. In modern terms, protection, racket. By the English and Scottish border dwellers, in return for immunity from raids or other harassment or harassment, however you like to say it. The word male. Part of blackmail derives from Middle English mail, rent, or tribute. The tribute was paid in goods or labor is blackmail. The opposite, or white mail, denotes payment by silver. An alternative version in the Scottish Highlands, if you paid by land, it was green mail. So there are three. That would make sense. That I found I had no I never heard I've never heard white or green mail before. So it was about the type of payment. Correct. Land or silver. Or, or then anything else or other. Correct. Pretty much. Because it could be cash. Right. It I mean, there's be, all kinds of. Right. And then and the term now is just blackmail. Goods. And you could pay by anything, oh, you, any means. Whatever means you want. That's yeah. really interesting. I was like, holy shit, there's other kinds of mail. So what year was it? That blah, 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 la, la, la. Tribute the thing? The Scottish Highlands. La, la, la. And the tribute thing makes sense. Yes. Because tribute was like, that's what they did when they went, you know, protect around the neighborhood, right? Right. You had to pay a tribute. Correct. It was like a rent. Yeah, so you don't get your ass beat. Totally. It's the final countdown. Dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun 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 You're up, bro. Oh, I am? Yeah. Oh. Well, I got four left. Do you want me to go again? I would love for you to go again. Okay, here we go. This one is very common, but I didn't know where it started from, and I didn't understand the second part. The tail of the tape. I knew it was a boxing term, but I didn't understand the tape portion. Tale, I'm assuming, is like a story, et cetera. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right, but, but I would think the, the tail of the part is the, the part that doesn't make sense. The tape part makes sense like a ruler. Tail of the tape sounds like it would be something that's measurable. Okay. See, I did not think of that. 
I, I had no but idea. I what, didn't think of the story of that, and that's interesting that you that that's how it is. I never thought about that. Because it's not so tail share, share t a i l like no, the tail of a rabbit. Like, it is like a story. It's tail t a l e as in a story. And it makes sense. And it'd I be thought, story of measurements because it'd be like height, weight. Blah, 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 blah. See, you're exactly right. Again, Preach. mother trucker. See, I thought tape maybe like they in the like see 1920s mm-hmm. the newspaper stories, Morse code, all that shit. When it was spit out, was that called tape? Oh, it, yeah. I don't think it, it was. was. That it was, was just what I thought. Right. Okay. The phrase tail of the tape refers to making an objective comparison, but particularly between two combatants. It comes from the sport of boxing where fighters are measured and weighed before a fight. The word tape in the phrase tail of the tape suggests the reach or height of with the first measurement beginning referred to. All right. I have an issue with reach. Do you, are you familiar with pugilists and combatants and whatnot? Yes. And what reach is? Yes. Do how, you know, can you explain what reach is to the audience if you, if you know what I it believe is? it's how long their arm is and how far they can punch. Is that... Well, it's How? wide. So basically, it's, oh, it's wing wide. Tip, it's fingertip to fingertip like oh, this. Oh, okay. I didn't. So I thought you, it was length of the arm. If you see a someone, they're like, what's five foot eight, 68 inches, and their reach is like 70, you know, 70 something, because it's actually a little bit wider than they are high. Okay. Of. Anyway, but it's fingertips out. This makes no sense that that would be a measurement in boxing. I would agree. I feel like reach should be. Point from the shoulder, whatever the shoulder, bl- like whatever the person's blade is, to a closed fist of that person. That well, to technically, the end of that. it would be the boxing, the outside of the boxing glove, right? Right, but I would just say as an individual because the glove would be the same okay. for all. So okay. this is just the individual. So, and back I agree. in the day, they probably did bare knuckle. So let's yes. let's go back to when it was originally before yeah. they even did gloves. Right. I would just do from whatever this a point on the shoulder blade is here on the shoulder collarbone, whatever. To the closed fist. That should be the reach. I agree. I thought that's what it was. Because when you do this, when you do wingspan, it's a very skewed number. It can be very out of whack from the actual reach punch ability. Because it's half, first of all, it's halved. Well, and, and then it's and also a certain, it's the length of someone's arms and, the, and their fingertips. torso right. and their fingertips and the width of their torso because you can have a smaller torso and longer arms Correct. or shorter arms, bigger torso. So re- that's not accurate at all. Correct. And I wonder where the term reach where they did that. And I'm wondering if it had something to do with maybe they had to touch the wall at all times before they could attack. So that was their reach was how far they could oh. reach. I wonder if that's something. Once again, it just ma- makes these things pop in my head. This is where, yeah, yeah, yeah. just because you came up with this, I didn't even, bring, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know tail So just a, an interesting aside. It so is. Clo- aside. Clo- close out the tail of the tape, my friend. That's all I got. The story. That's it. Of measurements. Yes, sir. I got three left. You're up, big man. Okay. In this time. Yes. Of the Cove. The Cove. Oh, do we even say the date? Today's January 31st, by the way. Happy Sunday. January. Happy January, everybody. 2021. January 31st, even though this will be on like March now. We're so fucking far ahead. It's crazy. I love it. I love that we're this prepared. El preparo. Si. Um, well, during this time, uh, face masks or shields, face shields are, are being worn in amongst youngsters in groups of classes when they go and learn stuff from books. So my friend who supervises these little ones makes them all wear these face shields. And the face shield is basically a clear piece of plastic that's like curved around your face. So you can look out and breathe from underneath. Right. But it doesn't, you know, nothing, you know, you don't breathe onto anything. You just breathe into the mask. So, one of these little kids started sneezing in the face of shield. You know where this is going, this obviously. Is amazing. It's just everywhere. <laughs> like, just, like, it reminds me like alien thing on the window, just where you know, like, you know, whatever, whatever, you name it. Insert gooey figure sticking on wall here or whatever. So the child starts freaking out like waving their arms and going i got god bless you's all over the inside <laughs> oh, 
shit. How fucking precious is that? I think that they're allergic to ho-ho. <laughs> it must be. It must <laughs> be an allergic to ho-hos. Oh, my but God. Like, once again, how a child thinks and how they just directly correlate. It's, it's another like weird like analogy, right? I got bless yous because yes, when you sneeze, when you, right. you, everyone says bless you. Right. So he associated the result of the sneeze as the name of associated with bless the noun. yous. Yeah. The verb changed to the noun. So he got bless yous all over the place. <laughs> That's amazing. I got bless yous all over the inside. <laughs> That's <laughs> hysterical. That, I, I don't know if I could supervise children like that because I'd just be laughing all day. I would literally be pointing it out. I'd yeah. be taking videos. Post, I'd, those children would be so doxxed. I'd be would so in trouble. Would you clean the inside of the shield I think for I the poor child? I would think I'd replace it. Oh, you have a spare. Okay. I would hope. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I would ho ho hope so. <laughs> um, of course, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I got bless yous all over the inside. Uh, so go ahead and do two more, and then I'll do one, and then you close it out. How yes, about sir. That? How's that sound? Dos mas. Dos mas. This is the next one I heard uh, on the TV yesterday, watching the golf from Torrey Pines, California, when the announcer said, "The proof is in the pudding." <gasps> I was like, oh. oh my god, that's on my list. Holy shit. Sir Nick Faldo fucking from the Golf Channel. Pre -cogger. This the two time Masters champion, Hall of Fame golfer, stole my phrase, which date backs seven hundred years. Wow. To the thirteen hundred, sir. The proof is in the pudding is a new twist on a very old proverb. The original version is the proof of the pudding is in the eating you that's the original and what it meant was you had to try out food in order to know whether it was good or not over the years the original proverb has evolved the original was the proof of the pudding is in the eating it was shortened to the proof of the pudding in america it morphed again so the proof is in the pudding i was like holy shit or the proof is in the pudding that changed for some a people. lot. It did. Absolutely. Well, 700 years, multiple languages. No, I'll just say that you know changed I mean? a lot in its etymology in the name of the phraseology. Those three phrases are so different. For Absolutely. It's, and that found that very interesting. And who knew that something dumb like the proof is in the pudding is 700 years old. That's crazy, dude. I would have get what my guess would have been that some kind of proofing in like bread puddings in Europe would have had to been done. You know how you prove bread? And nope. they have like Yorkshire pudding. Proving bread is Shit, like. Shit, I left the bread in, in the car. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bong, light bulb. Sorry, bro. I hope it's. What? Uh, what? Uh, the, sorry to everybody. Tangent. Uh, I went to Mary's baptism this morning, and Wayne on the way out had these. He made bread, and they were in the freezer. So I put it in the passenger seat, and I drove home, and I got out, and then I got my bike, and I came here. <laughs> and the bread's still in the car. Poop. I'm like, did you did you leave the oven on and the curling iron? Oh, what, what shit, you... the iron, the stove, the, everything's on, the man. Cur the curling iron in your hair dryer. The bread's on. gonna burn down. <laughs> wow. That sorry, dude. I've I usually create the confusing tangent. I have never been tangented like that. Well, you that said completely bread, man. anyway, so proving is a step in a bread making process back in the day some puddings were bread puddings right oh. and i wonder if there was like a proving process the proof is in the pudding so if it was good pudding okay then that confirmed that the product was good does that make sense do you like bread pudding no because no. it usually has braisins or some shit they what the some fuck's kind of a fucking, braisin a ra some no raisin oh raisin yeah. not brazen. brazen there's no bees and raisin no i was already poo-pooing it prior I was, oh <laughs> raisins and it sounded like brazens i didn't mean that i meant raisins and fruits and other nuts maybe Pfft. no give me give me some sourdough i can't do it give me chocolate and vanilla plain pudding and i'm very happy yesterday was a national croissant day did you have one no oh fuck motherfucker do we need to go right after this can I? Well, can you take us to the donut, the best donut place up there, so we can get some croissants and donuts? Yeah, I sure can. On your motorcycle, I'll my, just rob on the back. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would you're look gonna ride, so bitch, awesome. dude. 
Uh, one of my favorites is the. <laughs> I was like, bitch, see, yes. <laughs> I love the croissants the with the chocolate chips in them, bro. Oh yeah, the fu- this is where it's melted all oh, like up in there. But see, I like it milk versus dark or semi sweet. I like all chocolate, bro. Yeah, I'm just a, I like it more sweet. I like it more subtle. So I like it more of a milk chocolate than like a dark chocolate. But most of the contrast. Would you, the if dark you would you not eat it if it was dark? I would eat it. You damn would enjoy right, you less. would. <laughs> I would enjoy less. I choose, I choose a plain one or an almond. Almond like a marzipan, like an almond. Oh butter. yeah, oh, it's got that almond paste in it. Those yeah. are mm, those are good. Ooh. 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 Mm, I'm me some taters. Mm, some croissant. Am I am I doing two here? Yeah, but after proof the is proof in the pudding, is in so, the pudding. So basically, basically, but what it means to me is the proof is in the pudding means like it'll come to you'll figure it out when you test it or when you check it right yeah it's that's kind of what that means about food so, right right but i'm just saying the proof is in the pudding meaning is like once it goes through its rigors you'll know whether it's good or not basically right like yes okay because i'm trying to understand the etymology and then the proof is in the eating the puddings because you had to eat it to test if it was good or not correct like actually if it correct. was rancid or not or or did the did the chef suck yeah, but usually it's rancid. Back then, I would think it was more like, is it still edible? Okay. Or do we need to use it for cement? Do we need to back put it on in the, the day, walls? if it didn't make you throw up, you were eating it. I don't like <laughs> right? gourmet food. I think was just called food back then. That was like, for was, the kings, bro. Yeah, but seriously, like, seriously, bro. Yeah, but apples and shit were like glory, you know, glory items or whatever. Yes, but fruits, the fucking breads and whatever's so they'd fucking just house that shit. Like, it's flour and water. <laughs> Fuck it. Breads and circuses, bro. Yeah, and especially since you left the bread on at home. No, it's in the car. <laughs> I know. You it's left in the, the car. No, you left the bread on. It's going to burn down the house. defrosting. Uh, it's becoming unfrozen. It, what kind of bread is it? I don't know. It, it looks like it. It looks. Like, it's in a you? long French. It looks oh, like a baguette. It looks like a baguette. Oh. Correct. Oh. It looks like a thick baguette. Motherfucker. You, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's some eating It's going to be the shit right there with yeah, some spaghetti up in there, bull. Um, congratulations to super senior executive producer, Mary for her baptism. For her baptism. Yes. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Uh, via con Dios. Uh, no, that means go with God. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's go with that. Isn't that, yeah. Go with God, right? Like yes, the, it that does. is please. And not in a, in a, no. in a, yeah. uh, very happy for her. Right. Not in a, what's that condescending way at all. No, I mean, in a genuine. Yeah. She's awesome. Via con Dios. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you did that for yourself because that's absolutely. What, yeah. I, and I, I'm Okay. I went to church for the first time in four years. You didn't catch on fire and smoke. Uh, I, mean, I usually start smoking. And uh, yeah, uh, the in fact the the minister who I know, preacher Ryan, he said to Mary that uh, that's the one who got you in that class. Right? Yeah. So he goes, "Oh, we need some renovations. So if Chris comes in, the walls come down. We can do the renovations." I was like, "No, that's not. I would light it on fire. It wouldn't be yeah. crumbling. Come yeah, on, man. You need to get your attitude. What are you, correct. Jericho, bro? <laughs> Come no, on, that happened I'm with trumpets and Jericho. stomping. You don't do that. No, it'd be flames, bro. Yeah. In flames. Yeah, totally. Lightning strikes at least. <laughs> Lightning strikes again. You know? Lightning striking again. Who's that? Uh, Frankie Valley, possibly. Uh, bad, bro. No, that's. From I was the thinking Dawkin, Lightning Strikes Again, but that's fine. I need to look may at I, no, tell, Yeah, tell you your may second May I cover one. my second to last one? Yes. I like the word bedlam because I know that the, every year when Oklahoma plays Oklahoma State, it's called bedlam. Yes. And I, I was like, that. where does that term come from? I know it I know what it means. It means crazy or that it's bedlam. It's a descript it's an adjective it's to describe something, right? But I didn't know where it came from. The term bedlam comes from the name of a hospital in London. St. Mary of Bethlehem, which was devoted to treating the mentally ill in the 1400s. Over time, the pronunciation of Bethlehem morphed into Bedlam, and the term came to be applied to any situation where pandemonium prevails. Nice. Bedlam. Bedlam. Just the just the just the word Bedlam. Bedlam came from the word yeah. St. Mary of Bethlehem. That's crazy. <laughs> Where the crazy people were. Yeah, it's just a word. It kind of reminds me of like where I looked up Donnybrook, where it popped in my yeah. head. Like, where did Donnybrook come from? It's right. not really a phrase or a saying. It's it, just a thing. It's funny that it started 600 years ago in the UK, and now when Oklahoma plays Oklahoma State, that's what's referred to. That's fucking weird. Bro. Uh, yeah, but is it itself 
defining. You already use the word of the definition. You already use the word. The, you def, you use the word of the definition in your definition of crazy. Oh yeah, in Oklahoma, <laughs> where the wind comes sweeping down from the plains. Oh, where the waving wheat can sure so sit when the wind comes up before the rain. And then oh. you say, oh, by the way, lightning striking again. Yeah, Lou Christie. Lou Who? Christie. Who's that? In the sixties. Okay. He had like a, it was his one hit. Okay. So it was like Haircut 100. <laughs> of the 60s. But different. Yeah, because 60s didn't have any one-hit wonders at all. No, not one. All right, my friend. Yes. My last one. Please. Oh, this one. Fucking children, man. They do say the damnedest things. I mean, the gosh darn tootlingest things. <laughs> Coming back from another from holiday break again. My friend's supervisor was talking to one of my friend's supervisor's children. And the child was explaining how, actually it was before the break, how, how the, the child was explaining how they saw Jesus. And Jesus had Mary and the wise men around and the cat, like all the thing and describing the manger scene, right? The nativity. The nativity. Go. And thank you. Thank you. Because I have zero religious cred um my supervisor friend is like trying to get the child because it's a communication thing trying to get the child to communicate and express what where jesus is laying what's he in what's what have you know what's he lying in and he's in a and 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 he's in a and he's he's in the cow's breakfast <laughs> <laughs> and my, fr my supervisor friend, we, who shall still remain nameless, has already been doxxed, but um, is like, cow's breakfast? Like, it just, once again, it was like, you know, in a manger, right? You're sleeping yes. in the, cow's asleep in the hay. In and the cow's breakfast. The, which is what the cow eats. And the kid's like, he's, he's laying in the cow's breakfast. Like, with this assuredness and like this confidence and excitement that's because, right and it's a correct answer it's so correct because it's exactly what cows eat for breakfast is hey it is absolutely correct and it's so genius and yet so wrong but like <laughs> so genius no it's not it's wrong not it's not wrong. wrong at all no i know i'm making i'm being glib but glib but um he's lying in the laying in the cow's breakfast is I, if that doesn't explain just the special way children view the world, yes, I don't know what is. It's amazing. Anyway, at least Jesus wasn't laying on a ho ho or a ding dong or a. I think Mary was a whoa way now person like a ho ho. <laughs> on someone's ding dong. Hey, it's not that about shit it. was not spontaneous combustion, my friend. It was the immaculate reception, bro. Oh yeah, right off of Frank Iris' helmet Boom. or somebody's helmet <laughs> into Frank Iris' hands. Oh, I thought was that? Yeah, the immaculate reception was into Frank Iris. It bounced off. What's of Raiders the helmet. one in San Francisco when Dwight Clark? The made catch. It? That's called the catch. I got them confused. I believe that one's just the catch. Okay. That or was is that the one with the Dallas Cowboy? Guy? That was Dallas on defense, Against Dallas, right? And yeah. it was was yeah, it Joe Dallas Montana on and Dwight yeah. Clark? Yep, I have the and sign that, helmet in the. Uh, yeah, closet. We need in the to back of the end out. zone. Yeah, I have one and helmet. That was how they went to the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, I have one helmet. I think it's the first one. Helmet. Possibly. I have one helmet signed by Roger Craig, yes. Dwight Clark, and Joe Montana. Wow. And Jerry Rice was missing that day. Bastard. He was supposed to be there, but I do have another mini helmet, which is Jerry Rice and Montana. On That's the same awesome, one. dude. They're worthless because no they're, way. They're worth what someone's going to pay for them. Which, which is how much? Nothing. No one. No one. Ten dollars. Twenty. 21 19. plus shipping i saw something today on ebay not not that we're tangenting at all no but uh after the cow's breakfast no um on ebay yeah a 1977 prop stormtrooper imperial like helmet stormtrooper helmet okay on like full sale. size certificate of authenticity like you can wear it i believe you can wear it okay. it looks like that was wearable i didn't click on the thing actually i did click to it anyway $41,318.71 or something like oh that. Oh, my God. Cool. But the funny thing, it was like the buy it now price, but it's like, it was like to th and 13 cents, 
but shipping was $96.09. Where was it? I don't know, but what the fuck is exactly $96.09 shipping? Like, maybe that's like with insurance and stuff. And like, you're going to charge fucking shipping after charging 41 grand for a fucking certificate of authenticity. Do you, do you know what I mean? Fucking ship that shit for free, bro. For yeah, real. I don't be, be kind. I don't remember full size Star Wars helmets back in the day. I don't remember ever seeing those or even knowing about. I mean, it was them. in the movie. It was for the. Pro- it was a prop. Oh, it was a prop, it was a prop in like the a movie. movie. Right. I, I thought it was a toy. Oh no no no! Oh, like a prop. Okay. I think it's like a movie prop. Okay. That has a certificate of authenticity oh, that it was on the set. Like you probably worn. I don't. I'm not saying that that Harrison or Luke wore it, but yeah, somebody, some stormtrooper wore, wore it. Right. Yeah. Right. Or it was used somewhere in, yeah. in, in one of the scenes. I, if I won the lottery, I'd buy that shit. I have, dude, I'd have a bro. Bro. I don't know what I'd have. I don't know if I'd have like a... St- would you have a Lego room? Is that it? I didn't even think of that. Holy fuck. You just have a Lego Star Wars room. That's oh, all you'd have. poop. You wouldn't do... You'd just devote it all. Just every single like model number that ever came out. Do it like a Nike shoe collection. Uh, I would never even... Th- I thought... If I won the lottery, I'm like, oh, I'd have like seven motorcycles, three cars, not a lot of cars. But I didn't think I about it. I had, had never thought about anything past that. Then you said Lego, and I was like, oh, whoa, yeah. boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so busy. I don't know what I. I don't know what I'd have. It's a good question. I like cars for sure, but I'd love to actually like, rate like not race them and necessarily against people, but. Put race, drive them on tracks, and like do that kind of stuff. Did you have your own track? Well, if I if I was that rich, sure, why not? But you know, you can always rent track time. Yeah, I mean, there, there you could rent freaking Phoenix International if you really yeah, wanted to. Of course, yeah. So if you're that loaded, just fucking take the dog totes, leg, bro. Totes loaded, bro. I take the dog leg, the mile and a half dog leg. Yeah. The PIR. It's not even the PIR car? anymore. It's not Phoenix International, right? No, they else. changed they it. Changed the name. Yeah. So anyway, that my last one. That was it. Uh, cow's breakfast. Delicious. Asleep in the cow's breakfast. <laughs> Away in a manger. <laughs> Away in a cow's breakfast. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> Kids are the best. It, it, ho, ho, cow's breakfast. God bless you's all over the place. Not in leaning light up shoes in your life. And I get these muscles because I, I breathe all night when I sleep. These are fucking nuggets. I'm going to start saying all those, dude. These are gems that yes. everyone should take with them. That's right. It is. Children are fucking. And like that show. Have you ever watched Kids Say the Darnest Things no. back in the day? It like It's relaunched multiple times. I think even right. Tiffany Haddish did it recently. I don't know who that is. Uh, she's a female can- comedian. Okay. She's a, yeah, a she's comedian. a female comedian. I, I'm sorry. I can't say comedian. Comedian? No, no. You can't say like actress. You can't? No, it's a female actor. Oh. oh or is it now actor with a vagina? I don't know, dude. Is it kind of like child with autism? Like, is it actor with a vagina? I don't remember. Anyway. So it's not an actor with a pee pee. She's a funny person with a vagina. Okay. So you're allowed to say that? It does acting. I don't, I can't say anything anymore. Good that, thing you have a podcast. That we exist is a fucking miracle man anyway but kids say the darnest thing and you ask some questions and they're fucking some of those things are so brilliant but like you gotta sort through all a lot to get those nugget answers but they're just there sometimes you know what i mean sometimes you just get lucky yes but it's definitely it's not like remember i shared five of them my my friend who supervises them these children supervises them for like eight to ten hours a day or whatever time it is so it's not like, you know, five total phrases since we since I started recording these down or writing them down over eight hours a day. It's not it's not a lot of return of investment. Are you done? Can you please lean forward and talk? I'm leaning forward and talking. I love your <sighs> phrases. Finish. Thank you to the teacher, the supervisor of the children's that submitted these amazing sentences. <laughs> Maxi. <laughs> <laughs> Maxie. Do you have a little? Maxie. <laughs> Maxie. <laughs> yeah, you made the dog bark your dick. All right, last one, bro. You ready? Yes, sir. The cat is out of the bag. Oh. 
How far back does that date, sir? 1872. Totally wrong. Not even close. Yeah, like 1300s. I mean, that's, ooh. 1530. Okay. okay, Renaissance time. I mean, Renaissance time. Age of Enlightenment. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to take a guess to the origin of that phrase, sir? Cat out of the bag. The cat is out of the bag. Yeah, so cats are very hard to control. It's like herd of cats. <laughs> yes, like it's called a project cats. manager, herding cats. There you go, herding cats, right, because cats are so independent. So if you trapped a cat... If you wanted to corner it and got it into a confinement, which would be a bag at this time. They didn't have cat carriers back then, I would guess. Specific. Once it got out again, fuck. <laughs> Basically, is what I'm thinking, right? Because the cat's now out of the bag and we're fucked because it's going to create bedlam, actually. Whoa. Do. Totally wrong. You ready? Are you fucking serious? That's a. I would have been more confident about that When are we going to play Balderdash, bro? I would have been more confident about that answer than any other one that I've given up so far. And I was right on two of them. I didn't ask you about Bedlam. No, but I wouldn't have had. Yeah, nothing good yeah, about that. I would add Bedlam would have been some like with bedrock or bedsheet or some kind of like. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, like a construction problem. Oh, okay. Like the Flintstones. Yeah. Because like, he worked at the quarry. <laughs> Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. They're a modern Stone Age family. Okay. The cat is out of the bag, bro. <laughs> I'm just, just watching it burn, man. The explanation <laughs> for this phrase that was born uh, out of a ridiculous bit of livestock fraud. Dun, dun, dun. What? I can shit you not, sir. Livestock fraud? Merchants. Like, like selling a goat that's like not a goat? Wait for it. Merchants would sell customers live piglets. And after putting a pig in a sack for easier transport, would sometimes swap the pig for a cat when the customer looked away. The buyer wouldn't discover they'd been cheated until they got home and literally let the cat out of the bag. That is fucking crazy. Crazy. I would have never have guessed that one. Two champion. Nor I, okay, sir. Okay, complete that. Okay. That's it. That is you? all. 1530. The cat is out of the bag because there was some livestock fraud, bro. Okay. And cat out of the bag just means like, well, we got the information's out now. The secret's out. It's the secret's out, bro. I feel like my explanation's a better fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know origins.com should now be run by checkmark. I think my explanation of how it happened is better than the truth. <laughs> And this is how news organizations get started, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's been fun. See, once again, is. thank you to the children of my friends, of my friend. Thank you to the munchkins. Whom the, my friend was supervising. Yeah, thank to the you. little peoples. The little peoples are so smart. I'm going to share them again. I got God bless yous all over the inside. Referencing the sneezing and snotty snot. Yeah. I saw Jesus. He was laying in the cow's breakfast. <laughs> That's ah. my favorite one. He was laying. He was laying in the cow's breakfast. I got all these gifts from Ho Ho. Was awesome. <laughs> How did I get all these muscles? It's because I breathe all night when I sleep. And sir, before you close it with your words of wisdom, yeah. Actually, yeah, we haven't. We're not done yet. What? But I don't need light up shoes in my life. You don't? Are you sure? No. Could I persuade you, you otherwise? Know, if I were a more peaceful person, I would probably say that no one needs light, needs light up shoes in their life. Just words of wisdom from a child. It's yeah. Beautiful. Hey, man. And speaking Live your of children, life like a child. I mean, no. <laughs> so, Megzi happened to be out of uh, out of the house yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, well, we had gone to lunch, and then she hung out with her friend, her BFFer. Yeah. They went out for some more fun, which is totally cool, because we're like that. Um, so it gave me the opportunity to watch a movie. Jurassic poop. No. In which dog gets killed. Oh. Killed the dog. Cause Megzi really loves her dogs. Yeah. That's not a good so thing. So she yeah. can't watch a certain movie like John Wick. Oh yeah. So I finally had the opportunity to watch John Wick. You haven't seen it? I watched it once, but I, do you remember when we talked about this? I'm like, no, that's what I said. I said, and then I bought it again. 
And then I, da- I got the digital download with that because I got a like Black Friday deal for like five bucks. Okay. So I watched it again. It's a piece of shit movie, man. What? Fuck, I, I don't know. Why? Like I don't know. And I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. It was in my top 15 to go to the island, dude. I am sorry. It was watchless. Watcherless. It was hard to watch. I was trying to watch it intently, like paying attention to it. But there's one part that was great. Okay. So John Leguizamo punches yeah, uh, in the garage. Punches Theon Greyjoy. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, I forgot he was in. I forgot. <laughs> so, uh, so in the okay. garage in front of the Chevelle or whatever. So the, the Pest punches Theon Greyjoy. <laughs> the Pest? Yeah, wasn't it Leguizamo in the movie called The Pest? Wasn't that his first movie? No, he was in Who was Spawn. He, the, he was yeah, Spawn's Leguizamo. sidekick. Yeah, Leguizamo was also in The Pest. I, I never saw The Pest. Oh, it's like a piece of shit movie. It's like the worst movie ever. But I love John Leguizamo. I'm a yeah, huge, he's funny as shit. Huge John Leguizamo yeah. fan. I think he's a great actor. You ever see him in Signs? Remember? So whoever that... Anyway, that guy, Leguizamo, punches Theon Greyjoy in the in the stomach. Theon Greyjoy is the son of the, the Russian mafia mafia guy, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> so the head mafia guy calls John Leguizamo oh, in his yeah. garage, and he goes... I hear you struck my son. Why you do such thing? Or something like that. He's like, yeah. I, underst- I understand you struck my son. And he goes, yes, sir, I did. He's like, May I understand why? He, goes, he stole John Wick's car and killed his dog. Oh. <laughs> and then he just hangs up. And he hung up, yeah. He's like, he's like, oh, that's the only redeeming part of that movie. That's the bullshit, dude. Movie's fantastic. The when he's in the basement with the sledgehammer, taking the floor out, and he's like he's resurrected his old life, and then he goes to the Continental Hotel where you're not supposed to kill anybody. Then people die. It's but fucking it's, rad, dude. But it's so it's so choppy. I don't feel your like butt's it. choppy. That's not. Ugh, that movie is four and a half stars, bro. That is an awful review. Four. That's and a half the stars. best Yelp I've ever done. Your butt's <laughs> choppy. Four and a half. Twitter world. <laughs> Can you tell us, can someone tell us if we're, dude, I know, dude, look, my friend, Tony back East in Philadelphia, and donuts or Annie, rock a lamb. No, Anthony, uncle, Anthony, uncle elbow. He's going to tell me, he's going to be like, he's the one who wrote that thing on our website about what about John wick, bro? Oh yeah. 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 So sorry, Tony. I love you, man. Anthony, I love you. I love you also, Christopher, but tell me what's good about that movie. Everything. What? That that doesn't that doesn't do it. Vengeance is mine, saith John Wick. The character, the story, the do guns. You, do you feel like you ever would this have enhanced the story part? Because the story was let's just admit, other than we just know why he's fucking after them, there's not really a story. He's just Vengeance, literally after revenge. Blood. That's right. the story. That's the story. It's yeah. pretty straightforward. Don't die, but kill would, that kid. Would this have enhanced it? If he had raised the puppy and the puppy was like five or six and then they killed the dog. Whoa. So he actually built an attachment versus just yes, having a puppy. I, I agree with I that. Because I feel that's kind of where I lost me a little bit. And I, I, I'm going to sound like a total dick. But I just got that dog. And I know it's from my wife. Who just died. I know it's from my wife. So I know that connection. Who he changed is, his life for. Right. Is the closest. This is a dumb conversation. Right. Go on. What did she have? Cancer? Or something? Yes, I, I assume it, you, don't, the, you don't know. You assume. was it the implication? Okay. Yes. No, I'm just saying. Like I tried to watch that movie. Are you? I mean, you, I did watch the. Do entire you need movie. your two hours back? No, no, no. But you know what you need to do is bite on Laserdisc, bro. Because everything else on Laserdisc is poop, except for Red, Red Dawn. <laughs> I have Alien and Aliens on laser. You disc. are lying. I have, Star, I have Star Wars four, five, six on laser. Disc. Laser. You can laser talk disc. shit all you want. I can. But I've got good movies on my laser. Disc. I do have pieces of turd. Also, <laughs> <laughs> well, do does it turd sound sickles. different when you little 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 when it spins? Little little. Does the turd sound different when it spins? <laughs> Only is when it, it goes backwards. It's more like beep blah beep blah blah. Freddy's a devil. Beep blah blah blah. Freddy's a devil. Beep blah blah blah. Freddy's a devil. No, uh, so that so now that we've had that tangent out of the way, well, you're entitled to your opinion, you dipshit. I'm sorry. I apologize in advance because I want. Okay, this is the thing. I 
I feel like it's a real bro movie, and I'm less of a bro than I used to be. Bro? That's just what I feel like. Cornolio. <laughs> I like TP for my mom. Can you please uh, get, get off me, bro, and then close You're this talking. bad boy out? Anything else to add, sir? Nope. Oh, no. Uh, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. Mm-hmm.